Hi everyone, we are group five for file 444C at NAU, the capstone class, and our final project is on Duchenne muscular dystrophy. So to start off, we're gonna go with a little case study. So meet Nico. Nico is a five-year-old male who lives with his mother in Flagstaff, Arizona. Ever since Nico was three, his mother has noticed some strange things about his behavior. Nico is not crawling or walking at a normal age. He has difficulty standing up and walking. He falls a lot and he is unable to jump. Due to these abnormalities, Nico's mother decides to take him to the doctor. After discussing the presenting symptoms and noticing that Nico has a waddling gait and enlarged calf muscles, the doctor decides to run some additional tests. Among these are the Gower sign test, which determines how easily someone is able to go from a sitting or supine position to a standing position. Nico's Gower's test came back positive, which means that in order to stand up, he has to use all of his limbs. Given this result, the doctor decides to test serum creatine kinase levels and run a multiplex ligation probe ampli amplification, or MLPA test, that looks for genetic abnormalities. Nico's serum creatine kinase levels came back 20 times higher than normal, which indicates that there's an issue with his muscle cells. Nico's MLPA test shows a mutation in the dystrophin gene, which means that he is unable to produce the normal dystrophin protein. Based on these results and Nico's presenting symptoms, the doctor diagnoses Nico with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Duchenne muscular dystrophy is a genetic disease on the X chromosome that is irreversible and progressive. Because of this, only management efforts can be prescribed to Nico. The doctor prescribes Nico with the corticosteroid prednisone for the short term, which will hopefully allow him to be able to walk until the age of 13. The doctor also advises Nico's mom to have him passively and actively stretch each night to avoid developing scoliosis, as well as participate in submaximal aerobic exercise like swimming. And in regards to testing, the doctor says that Nico should, additionally, any female siblings of Nico should come in for an MLPA test to determine if they are a carrier of Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Although Nico's disease cannot be cured, with these preventative measures, it is possible that Nico's life expectancy will rise to somewhere in his 30s. So the background slash history, so in the 1860s, 60s, Duchenne muscular dystrophy was first described by a French neurologist who is pictured on the right. Duchenne would wander around hospitals in the country to find rare neuromuscular disorders, and this al allowed scientists to characterize the disorder, but he wasn't able to describe the mechanism behind it. And then in 1986, so over 100 years later, researchers with the Muscular Dystrophy Association found that a mutated gene on the X chromosome caused Y. Uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy. The following year, researchers were able to define the mutated protein as dystrophin. So in normal muscle cells, dystrophin is a protein that works to make muscle fibers strong and protect them from injury, but mutated dystrophin causes muscle cells to become progressively weaker, which causes these cells to damage easily. delayed motor function. So it will take longer for them to learn to sit, stand, or walk. Um, Pseudo hypertrophy, which is enlarged calf muscles, um, which is due to fat depositions as opposed to muscle fibers. Muscle weakness, which usually starts in the pelvic area and progresses to other body parts over time. Muscle atrophy, toe walking or waddling gait, which is due to the weakness in the pelvic girdle. Gower's maneuver, which as mentioned before, is using the hands to get up off the floor. And cardiomyopathy, a disease of the heart making it harder to pump blood throughout the body. For the incidence, DMD is considered a rare disease, yet it is one of the most common genetic diseases amongst men, affecting about one in 3,500 male births worldwide. It also rarely can affect one in 50 million female births worldwide, and it is estimated that approximately 250,000 individuals in the United States are living with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Hi, my name is Allison Prickett, and I'll be going over some of the risk factors associated with DMD. 
So as previously described, it is a genetic disease that is X-linked recessive. Um, and it's typically passed from mothers to sons because mothers can be carriers as they have two X chromosomes and they won't exhibit DMD themselves, but then their sons will only have one copy of the X chromosome and thus will exhibit it. Um, the gene affects production and function of the protein dystrophin, and that's required for normal muscle function. And although the affliction is genetic, and so um, it's hard to define risk factors, there are certain comorbidities that can negatively affect prognosis, um, meaning that their, um, their lifespan will be shorter, which is being underweight, which is classified as a BMI of less than 18.5 decreased lung, lung function, which is less pressure during inhalation and exhalation, increased proteins in the blood indicating that the heart is damaged or weakened, such as with cardiomyopathy, and certain enzyme levels are lowered, which indicates liver damage. Um, so the underlying physiology and pathophysiology, um, like as previously described, DMD is an X-linked recessive illness, and that inhibits the production of the protein dystrophin. When absent, the dystrophin-associated protein complex, also known as DAPC, is destabilized, which means that you're going to exhibit progressive fiber damage and membrane leakage. And this causes eccentric contractions, meaning um, those meant to decelerate movement, slow you down, uh, bring you back to resting position. And these place high stress on the fragile membranes that lack dystrophin. And this leads to tiny microscopic lesions that may cause an imbalance of calcium flow and ultimately cell death. And if the cells continue to die, then when they regenerate, they can have an altered um, anatomy physiology. You can exhibit inflammation and fibrosis, which is that buildup of scar tissue due to continual damage. And all of these contribute to the cardinal signs and symptoms of DMD. Um, this ultimately will cause muscle weakness and atrophy. And then mortality is often caused by impaired cardiac function, which is most commonly cardiomyopathy, which is a, um, your heart is beating so hard, you have enlarged um, uh, atria and ventricles. And as well as weakening of the diaphragm, which causes pulmonary complications, if you're unable to cough and clear out your lungs, you'll have a buildup of mucus, a buildup of bacteria, and that can ultimately be um, very detrimental to health. So um, Nancy and I'll be discussing diagnostic tests, results, imaging, um, so for diagnostic tests, there are several. You have a CK level, which is a blood test that checks for the amount of creatine kinase present in the blood. You have genetic testing, which examines DNA for the Duchenne muscular dystrophy gene. You have a muscle biopsy, an electromyogram, which measures muscle response or electrical activity in response to nerve stimulation of the muscle, and an electrocardiogram which records the electro acti electrical activity of the heart. So for the results, high levels of CK in the blood suggest that the muscle is being disintegrated by an abnormal process. On average, CK levels are anywhere between 22 to 198 units per liter. However, people with uh, DM DMD tend to have levels that are anywhere between 10 and 100 times higher than average. Um, on this screen, you'll see an image of healthy muscle tissues and Duchenne muscle, muscle tissues. And those are typically obtained through a muscle biopsy. Um, other imaging will arise from the electromyogram and the electrocardiogram. Moving on to treatments and therapies, there are different types of medication that people can take. You have corticosteroids, such as prednisone and deflazacort, which are corticosteroids, and you have exon skipping medications such as exondis 51 and biondis 53, which uh, exondis 51 was approved by the FDA in 2016 for use and skipped exon 51, whereas biondis was approved by the FDA in 2019 and skips exon 53. Therapies typically associated for treatment of 
Duchenne muscular dystrophy or physical therapy and occupational therapy. Surgery might also be used to correct spinal curvatures such as scoliosis and kyphosis and respiratory care to prevent respiratory infections and it could be potentially used for assisted ventilation. Um, the images on the screen on the top left that's the image of deflacic court and the bottom right is an image of prednisone. The prognosis for Duchenne muscular dystrophy is a grim one, being that life expectancy is usually no more than 30 years, averaging uh, about 26, often being a lot earlier than that, around 15 to 20. And being that it is X-linked, it typically affects boys. And the muscle weakness begins around age four in the lower extrem extremities, such as the thighs, and then it quickly uh, progresses to the arms and upper body which makes it difficult to move and complete daily life activities. And the majority of those affected are in a wheelchair by their late teens to early 20s. And it's due to this increase in muscle weakness over time. And being that it starts in the lower extremities, it affects the, uh, the walking first. And the advances in medicine have both increased life expectancy over the, uh, the past 200 years since it has been discovered and the quality of life. And there is no cure and the disease will progress until death until more advances in medicine have been made. And uh, more interesting information and facts about it is, um, we mentioned some of this briefly before, but it affects approximately one in 5,000 male births and approximately one in 50,000 females suffer from uh, severe Duchenne muscular dystrophy um, in terms that actually affect their life. And uh, being that there are a large amount of female carriers because it is a double X, uh, because they carry two X chromosomes, 8% uh, of female carrier, uh, carriers experience mild muscle weakness over time. And the oldest recorded individual with DMD turned 40 years old in 2011, but another man was recently discovered in the Netherlands and uh, is 54 years old. And physical therapy can drastically improve quality of life. And overall, there are less than 200,000 cases in the US per year, um, which is unfortunate because it is a very rare disease and it affects uh, a large amount of the male population. And, and, and it can only be inherited. Uh, the disease cannot be contracted later in life. Um, so it is usually found early on in life. And then here are the references that we use throughout our PowerPoint. 